So in this second uh, video lesson of this theme, uh, I will uh, explain you how to test for heteroscedasticity uh, statistically. So um, I already recommended in the previous lesson that uh, it can be useful to uh, make some scatter plots to to uh, visually detect heteroscedasticity. And I'll briefly continue on the theme that uh, that what can we do in the multiple regression. So we can use the so-called residuals versus fitted plot or RVF. Uh, then then I will go to the some general principles of uh, statistical testing of heteroscedasticity. Uh, I mentioned here the so-called Coldfeld quant test, but I will mainly focus on the so-called Broyce-Pagan test, and uh, I'll also discuss the the white test. So uh, remember, I already mentioned this in the in the previous lesson. So here was this uh, this uh, scatter plot of the Espo housing market. Uh, so uh, I plotted here the uh, explanatory variable and the dependent variable. But uh, this kind of of course scatter plot only applies if you have a single regression case. So if you have multiple explanatory variables, then it's not so simple to 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 make this kind of scatter plot of the of your data uh, if you have a multiple regression model then okay of course if you have not not that many variables you can make, make multiple such kind of plots but then uh, in the case of multiple regression case uh, it can be useful to use so-called rvf or residuals versus fitted plot uh, where on the horizontal axis you have the fitted values of y so that, those would be the predicted uh, values y hat so that would be this alpha plus uh, beta times x or in fact a plus b times x in the single regression case and uh, then on the horizontal axis you plot the uh, regression residual so uh, if you have for example uh, run the regression model in in excel then uh, it's quite easy to make this kind of rvf plot because uh, uh, because uh, Excel can produce you the, the fitted values and the residuals directly, so you just need to plot. Or in fact, you can even check in the options to make it uh, make it automatically. So uh, this is an example actually of the electricity distribution firms that I I used uh, previously as an example of the uh, instrumental variable regression. And uh, here again, these, uh, these uh, blue diamonds uh, represent observations. Uh, and uh, here then, this kind of diagram illustrates that uh, we might have some kind of issues with the functional form because uh, clearly the, uh, these um, residuals are not just, uh, uh, not just uh, randomly or uniformly distributed across this, uh, this uh, whole range. However, it's quite difficult to tell because uh, if you look at these very small values of the fitted, there's, there's systematically positive residuals for this uh, cluster of some four observations. Uh, then we get somehow negative residuals and, uh, and also for the very large value of Y, we have also, also negative residuals. So this kind of pattern might uh, uh, raise some concerns about the functional form. That is, is the functional form actually appropriate for modeling this uh, this kind of data okay but i don't go to now to the alternative uh, functional form assumptions but the uh, uh, point here is that uh, that um, sometimes when the, when we have this kind of uh, visual inspection it's not immediately clear that is is there heteroscedasticity or not so sometimes like in this case it might be difficult to interpret this kind of visual case so particularly for that point of view, it's, it's very useful to have uh, some uh, formal statistical test. Uh, so it's not just a matter of uh, opinion or matter of interpretation, but we actually do have some kind of uh, uh, more, more objective approach to say, okay, is there significant uh, heteroscedasticity or not? And this is the purpose of why we have such kind of uh, statistical test for heteroscedasticity. So let me still, uh, Go through this empirical case. So, so what does the, if, if we apply uh, the Broyce Pagan heteroscedasticity test, what does it tell in this case? So, I'll get to the theory a little bit later, but uh, here's how, for example, a, a Stata implementation of the Broyce Pagan test would look like. 
So in the first place, uh, we would just run the regression model. I think here I have on the top part of, uh, of, the, of the equation, it is just, uh, just the linear regression explaining, explaining logarithm of uh, electricity trans or energy transmitted by the uh, logarithm of OPEX and log logarithm of capital uh, measured by replacement value. So the top part is just a standard linear regression, okay? And then, then I have used this uh, uh, head test uh, function. So we need to save the residuals and then apply this uh, heteroscedasticity test to the regression residuals. So the bottom part of this uh, slide will indicate then how the stata output of the browse bacon test would look like. Um, it's also also alternatively referred to as Cook Weisberg test. So very often, of course, there are similar tests has been or similar econometric or statistical idea has been proposed by multiple different people. Uh, and anyway, stata guides you here that the, that the null hypothesis is that there's constant variance. And by now you should remember that constant variance, of course, refers to the homoscedasticity. So homoscedasticity is here the null hypothesis. If we reject it, then, then we have heteroscedasticity. Okay. And uh, now how, how do we read? There's not, not much to read, but there is something. There is the so-called G squared. Uh, and, and in parentheses, there is the degrees of freedom. In this case, it would be just one. And, um, and uh, there is 2.51. So this 2.51 is the value of the test statistic. Okay. And uh, this G squared statistic, we would then compare to the critical values of the of the G squared distribution with one degree of freedom. But Stata already indicates the p value also directly. So that is this uh, BROP greater than G squared. So the p value of the test is 0 0.113. So also by now you should be familiar with the p value and how to read it. So this would mean that we, we compare now this uh, p value to the to the significance level of the test. So if we have, for example, 5% significance level, then we see that the p value is greater. So it means that we cannot we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity at 5% significance level. We also cannot reject it at 1% level, or we cannot also reject it even at the 10% level. So therefore, this uh, Broyce Bacon test indicates that uh, that uh, the null hypothesis of constant variance, in other words, homoscedasticity, uh, is maintained according to this test. So we don't have a significant problem with heteroscedasticity in this uh, this previous example, even though it's not really a perhaps nice looking uh, RVF plot, but uh, but uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity by the Price bacon test in this case. Okay, so that's that's how simple it is. For example, in Stata and other statistical software, you just need to be able to read this kind of uh, statistical test. And uh, so far, we have uh, encountered so many different types of tests. We have used t-test, and we have f-test, and now we have this kind of g-squared test. Uh, always, this kind of p-value is re read in the same way. And also here, for example, you see that Stata is guiding the user also, what is the null hypothesis and so on. You just need to have some basics of the statistical inference to be able to use it. So let's go a little bit now in more, more theory. What is this Broyce Pagan test based on and what is what the other, other similar heteroscedasticity tests, what are they based on? So like in this previous example, the starting point is that we, we uh, fit the original model by OLS. I think we could also equally well use instrumental variables. But anyway, we have uh, estimated the regression model and we have the residuals. So the starting point is that we have already the regression residuals. And remember this we indicate by E. And uh, then we need to take uh, the squared values of the residuals because uh, the residuals themselves, they can be positive or negative. Uh, so the, the residuals themselves don't necessarily say something about the, their variance. So to be addressing the variance, we take the squared values of the residuals. So e to power 2. And uh, in the Broyce-Pagan test that we considered uh, uh, on the previous slide, uh, then we 
use this kind of auxiliary linear regression model that we can simply estimate by OLS. So we could do it also equally well in Excel, for example, or any other, other software. Namely, we just uh, uh, regress the squared values of the residuals of the original model on the predicted values of Y. So this is this kind of uh, totally ana an in analog with this uh, residuals versus fitted plot that we have. So now we have squared residuals uh, regressed on the fitted values of Y. Okay. So there are also many different variations of this theme, but typically in the heteroscedasticity test, the dependent variable is always the squared value of the, of the residual. In the halbert whites test, known as the white test, uh, then we don't use the fitted value of Y, but we rather use the explanatory variables X. So we use all of the X variables, but also then in white test, we use the squared values of the X variables and typically also their cross products. So we would take also products of, uh, of the variables. So if you have many explanatory variables, then this auxiliary regression, of course, then includes quite a large number of explanatory variables. Okay. But uh, the main thing here is that uh, what we are asking is that uh, can we explain somehow the the squared value of the residuals. So is there some kind of pattern behind the squared values of the residuals? And in that respect, then different tests, uh, uh, are, all of the heteroscedasticity tests are regressing the squared values of uh, residuals or perhaps the logarithm of the uh, squared values of uh, residuals. Uh, they differ in terms of do they use the, these explanatory variables to explain and find the pattern or the predicted values of y or 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 what what could be there so in some sense here is a somewhat the trade off between the pro bacon approach and the white white's approach so uh pro bacon test makes a more specific uh, assumption about the heteroscedasticity uh if the assumption is correct then it is more powerful test uh, whereas in white test, the idea is to use very flexible uh, quadratic functional form. So in that respect, uh, white test is more general because it doesn't really make any specific assumption about the heteroscedasticity, what is causing the heteroscedasticity, but it's not so powerful as the, as the Broch Bacon test. You could also, of course, have some other indicators for the, for the heteroscedasticity. So, so like I mentioned that, uh, Heteroscedasticity typically relates to the size of the unit, so you might have some kind of other indicators of the of the size, which is not part of the original regression model, or it could be some kind of groups of variables. So it would be sort of groupwise heteroscedasticity. So there are there are many many possibilities, but the idea in 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 general is the is very very similar in these uh, these different tests. So. Uh, in general, also the null hypothesis of the of the heteroscedasticity test is always that of homoscedasticity, like I've already mentioned in this empirical examples. So the null hypothesis states that the variance is constant across all observations. And if we reject the null hypothesis, then the alternative hypothesis is that uh, the variance differs at least for some pair of uh, observations i and j. So um, both in the case of uh, the white test and the Broch Bacon test, uh, the test statistic is so called likelihood ratio test. So it's, it's LR abbreviated. So the test statistic is simply calculated as the sample size n times the coefficient of determination of this auxiliary regression, where we use the squared values of residuals as the, as the dependent variable. So remember that the white test and the Preuss Begin test differed in terms of what are the explanatory variables of this uh, auxiliary regression. But in both cases, of course, we get the R squared statistic for this regression and the test statistic is also uh, formed in the same way. So it is just uh, uh, N times R squared. And now it, if the null hypothesis is true, if there is a homoscedasticity, so obviously the uh, explanatory power of this auxiliary regression should be uh, relatively small. So, so the R squared would be quite small. And the statistical test is based on this kind of testing that, okay, is this uh, uh, empirical fit of the auxiliary regression so big uh, 
or so good that uh, that we can we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. So if the null hypothesis is true and there's just kind of accidental uh, heteroscedasticity, then then this uh, value of the test statistic uh, follow the, follows the g-squared uh, distribution uh, with the number of uh, number of uh, degrees of freedom equal to the number of regressions of the auxiliary regression. And uh, if you want to calculate the uh, critical value of the g squared distribution. Here's also the Excel function for that. So, so it's called this e equality sign and g inv. Okay. So, in the in this uh, electricity distribution example, we didn't really find any significant heteroscedasticity. But uh, the next question, of course, if we do find heteroscedasticity, is, uh, is that uh, okay? What to do with it? So. That, that will be the topic of the third video lesson of this theme, how to deal with heteroscedasticity. Thanks and bye.